Good morning students. I am Yogeshwari. In this video, I am going to teach you class 10 physics chapter light reflection and refraction. And today's topic is reflection. Okay. Before we talk about reflection, let's discuss about light. What is light? Light is nothing but a form of an energy which gives a sensation of sight. When you enter inside a dark room, we cannot see the object, isn't it? So when you switch on the light, light falls an object and it reflects back. That's what we can see the object. Of course, we can see the shape, size, color of an object. That is due to reflection. When light falls an opaque object, it reflects back. That is called reflection. Okay, what are the uh, two phenomena that are associated with light? Could you guess? Yes. One is reflection and the one is refraction. These two phenomena we can experience in our daily life, isn't it? We can take so many examples from our daily life. What is reflection? Reflection, when you are standing in front of the mirror, you can see, you can see yourself in the mirror, isn't it? You can get the image that is nothing but reflection. What is refraction? When you, when you see the dark night sky, you can see the stars appears to be twinkling. Do the stars actually twink twinkling? No, it appears to be twinkling. Why? Because due to refraction. Refraction is nothing but bending of light. So when light travels to different mediums, to different transparent medium, light gets refracted or we can say light gets bent. That's what from the star, the light from the star reaches our earth when it crosses different density of medium. So the light gets refracted. That's what the stars also appears to be twinkling. Okay. And I'll show you one more example. Okay. What are this? Uh, this is glass. Of course, this is a uh, glass half filled with water. And there are two different mediums, you know. One is air medium. Another one is water medium. And of course, this spoon. I'm going to put the spoon inside the glass. Now you can see. You can see below the water level, the spoon appears to be bent. Isn't it? This is also due to refraction. Okay, let's. Uh, refraction and the image formation everything we will discuss in the upcoming videos now let's focus on the uh, today's topic reflection incident ray reflected ray and the normal and the point of incident all all are lie in the same plane another one is angle of incident is equal to angle of reflection these two are, two uh, these two are laws of reflection of course, all plane mirrors, plane mirrors, spherical mirrors, these mirrors or any reflecting surface, it obeys laws of reflection. Whether it's a rough surface or a smooth surface, it obeys laws of reflection. Okay? Okay. So, we know very well, plane mirror is a very good example of reflecting surface. What is plane mirror? Of course, it's a nothing but a glass plate only. It's a glass plate. One side they coated with amalgam. What is amalgam? Amalgam is nothing but mixture of silver and mercury. That's what we can get the shiny silver surface. Silver, shiny silver, silver surface we can see. And then over that they coated with paint. Okay. So now your mirror is ready. This is the way they are making mirror. Okay. Mirror is a very good example of reflecting surface. With the mirror, we can see the art image. What are the types of image you can? What are the characteristics of image formed by a plane mirror? Of course, it's virtual, erect, laterally, inverted, and same size, same distance. These are things you have learned in the junior classes also. What do you mean by virtual image? Virtual image is nothing but the image that cannot be obtained on the screen. The image formed on the mirror itself. That is called virtual image. Right? And erect, of course, you know, it's upright, not upside down. And laterally inverted, right side appears to be left and left appears to be right. And same distance, same color, same size. Isn't it? So, these are the characteristics of image formed by a plane mirror. Now, in this topic, 
In this chapter, we are going to discuss about spherical mirrors. What are spherical mirrors? Of course, spherical mirrors are part of the sphere, right? That's what is called spherical mirrors. Now, observe this spoon. So, you can see one side is curved in and other side is bulged out. Curved in surface, we can say it is concave mirror and the bulged out reflecting surface, we can say it's a convex mirror. Okay, so spoon is a very good example to show concave and convex mirror. Now, so concave mirror, I told you, concave mirror is a spherical mirror. Of course, it's a curved in reflecting surface and you can see the dotted lines, the shaded outside, it is a polished surface. Okay, inside it's a reflecting surface and of course this is a concave mirror and this point is called C, nothing but, nothing but center of curvature and this point is called pole. So you must have learned certain terms before we, uh, before we talk about the image formation as well how to draw the ray diagram, we have to learn certain terms. So this is pole, nothing but the center point of the mirror and C is nothing but center of curvature. Of course, it's a part of the sphere. So with the help of the center point only, we can draw the sphere, right? So C is the center of curvature and PC is called radius, radius of curvature, okay? So pole and this is center of curvature and the imaginary line that passes through pole and the center of curvature is called principal axis, right? This is an imaginary line. We can, we can call it as normal also. It passes through pole and center of curvature. Right? And these are the, these two parallel lines. It's called incident rays. When we are talking about the object which are at infinite distance, when the object is at infinity, we have to draw the parallel lines only. So, one is above the principal axis, one is below the principal axis and the arrow mark shows the direction of the ray, right? So, these two are the incident rays, incident on the reflecting surface and then after reflection, they are converging at a point on the principal axis, nothing but focus. So, this point is called focus, okay? So, this is center of curvature and this is focus and this is pole. And PF is nothing but focal length. And PC is nothing but radius of curvature. So radius of a curvature is, is equal to double the focal length. Okay. Double the focal length we can say it's a radius of curvature. Like radius of curvature is uh, 20 centimeter. For, ex for an example you can take radius of curvature is 20 centimeter. So what would be the focal length? So it should be 20 upon 2 nothing but 10 centimeter. If the focal length is 10 centimeter, then the radius of curvature must be 20 centimeter. Is that clear? So 2F is equal to R. Okay. So similarly, uh, this mirror, nothing but convex mirror, which is bulged out reflecting surface. Bulged out reflecting surface. Again, you can see this is pole and this point is called, this point is center of curvature. And uh, PC is nothing but radius of curvature. So for this convex mirror, center of curvature lies at the back side of the mirror. Whereas in concave mirror, center of curvature forms in front of the mirror. And focus also forms in front of the mirror for concave mirror. Whereas in convex mirror, focus forms at the back side of the mirror. Why? So we are taking two incident rays again. The show the arrow mark shows the direction. So these are the these two are the incident rays falls on the surface and they are reflected back. So now you can see these are the diverging rays. Then how can we get the image? So when you extend these lines at the back, we can get the the rays meet at a point on the principal axis that is called focus. So PF is nothing but focal length. It means for convex mirror, focus lies at the back side of the mirror. That's what 
convex mirror can produce only virtual image virtual image means image that cannot be obtained on the screen as it is we can see in the plane mirror also we are not getting the uh, image on the screen we are getting the image on the mirror itself it means at the back side of the mirror right so that is virtual image image that can be obtained on the screen is called real image so for concave mirror we can get both real and virtual image depends upon the position that these are the nature the position of the image everything we will discuss in the upcoming videos okay is that clear all of you just learn the important terms and please draw the uh, how to locate the focus of both the mirrors okay thank you stay healthy